thank you very much all together. I'm happy to have some of you uh, with us. And uh, as said before, I'd like to introduce uh, the Institute itself and how do we do the characterization of fuel cell components in my department. So to start with, the Fraunhofer Institute for Solar Energy Systems is uh, situated in Freiburg in the very south of Germany. And we are the second largest institute of the Fraunhofer Gesellschaft with about 1,300 employees. And within this institute, there's the business area hydrogen technologies at Fraunhofer Easy. We have three departments there. One is dealing with uh, power to liquids, power to, to generate synthetic fuels, for example, and power to chemicals, to create chemicals out of hydrogen. Uh, second uh, is dealing with electrolysis, so the generation of hydrogen. And the third department is my department, and we are operating on, on working on fuel cell development, and we are assisting industry to come to better products with our research and engineering services. So what we do basically is that we are working on uh, fuel cell component development and characterization so that our customers can um, come to better products regarding the performance, regarding the lifetime, uh, minimizing degradation. We are investigating contamination effects, uh, doing climate testing and so on. In general, uh, our customers work together with us because they want to optimize their materials, to validate their materials, to validate their models, so their understanding of their components, and uh, to learn about the system operation strategy or how to operate a stack and a cell. So. Coming to my topic, uh, characterization of membrane electrode assemblies for fuel cells, um, we usually work um, with so-called zero gradient um, test cells, which you use in labs because they offer the opportunity to really define the operating conditions. So zero gradient means that you don't have any gradients regarding concentration, regarding temperature, humidity, etc., from inlet to outlet, so that you really can characterize the material independent from design effects. We like to work with this um, test cell, which we developed by ourselves together with uh, the Baltic Fuel Cell Company, and you can have a look at this uh, test cell at the booth of Baltic just over there. We like to work with this cell because it's really reliable, it's easy to handle, and it um, is uh, designed for very reproducible results. In this case, you see five uh, MEAs from the same generation, and you see five polarization curves with this MEA, and you nearly see no difference, and we are especially proud of, because even at the very high power densities, of, uh, and current densities of over 4 amps per square centimeters, you don't see any difference from sample to sample, from cell to cell. So it's really reliable and reproducible regarding uh, the results. And this is especially uh, helpful if you want to characterize materials. Going uh, into the topic of characterization membrane electrode assembly, so the membrane electrode assembly consists of different layers. One important layer is the membrane itself, so we apply um, different test protocols to characterize these membranes. Usually our customers refer to either the Japanese protocols from NIDO or the American protocols from uh, DOE. Or, of course, there are a lot of customer-specific uh, testing protocols also available. Regarding membrane testing, you usually differentiate between chemical degradation, which is uh, represented by open circuit voltage hold test, OCV hold test, and the mechanical degradation, which uh, occurs uh, due to the change of humidity and you have usually wet and dry cycles as shown here. 
So dry, uh, dry situation for some minutes and then wet uh, situation for some minutes. This curve shows uh, the experimental results for three different types of membranes and you see that there's a lot of difference regarding uh, the degradation behavior. In this case, we applied the OCV voltage test over some time. And what I would like to mention is that to understand the degradation effects, it helps a lot if you can combine this in situ in operando testing uh, if you can combine this with other characterization methods like crossover current measurement, shortcut uh, current measurement, and of course the degradation of the membrane um, is due to the release of fluorine ions. So if you can measure this fluorine ion uh, release, then it helps a lot to understand the de membrane degradation. Another topic regarding MEA characterization is the degradation of the catalyst support. Usually the platinum catalyst is uh, um, on, uh, uh, on, on carbon particles. So what we investigate is the degradation of the carbon particles, which is uh, done regarding the uh, Japanese and the American uh, protocols due to the same uh, testing procedure with a voltage cycling. Uh, we applied this voltage cycling in this uh, curve. You see how the current at a certain voltage of 700 millivolt uh, de uh, decays over time, over the cycling time here. And you see some blue dots and some red dots, which are the different test protocols from Japan and from US. I said before, it's the same test protocol. The only difference is the characterization method and interval between these um, cycles. And basically, we see it doesn't make any difference if you are testing according to the American protocol or the Japanese protocol. We did this for uh, four samples and applied both protocols. And we see basically the same decay over time regarding the uh, support aging. Last uh, results that I wanted to show is on the aging of the catalyst itself. So the platinum, for example, uh, the platina, platinum aging protocols are uh, also very similar. You have a voltage potential cycling from uh, the lower potential limit of 600 millivolts up to an upper potential, uh, upper potential limit of 900 millivolts according to the DOE protocol and 950 millivolts according to the Japanese protocol from NIDO. Um, first diagram shows that it's really crucial that you uh, start with the uh, um, uh, best break-in procedure for the catalyst and for the MEA. So you have to assure that the MEA is in best condition that you can reach. Therefore, you have different break-in protocols. And unfortunately, these break-in protocols are not state-of-the-art and they are not clearly defined. So if you don't have a, a defined uh, start situation, then of course it's uh, uh, it's, it's a problem uh, to have an analysis of the um, voltage decay over time. So you should put uh, some effort in to define a good break-in procedure. And unfortunately, the break-in procedure um, has to be related very much on the catalyst that you use. And different catalysts are used um, in the fuel cell world. So, for example, I showed uh, the situation if you have a break in procedure for pure platinum catalysts here, then you get some curves. And this break in procedure is fine for pure platinum. But if you then use the same break in procedure for um, platinum cobalt catalysts, for example, uh, then you get a um, averse situation for the starting point. So you have to optimize the break-in for platinum cobalt catalyst um, and to do a change regarding to a, a pure platinum catalyst. 
then coming to the degradation analysis and characterization, if you apply then the, these protocols, you see a different decay of the diff for the different um, catalysts. For example, we have here again platinum cobalt with a, a platinum loading of uh, 0.4 milligrams per square centimeter. We have then a pure platinum catalyst, but a lower loading of 0.25 milligrams per square centimeter, and then same pure platinum, but uh, with a higher loading again. And you see uh, a certain voltage decay over, t or in this uh, diagram, I show the decay of the electrochemical active surface area. And you see how these different catalysts behave over time. As I said before, we usually apply these uh, international, very well-known testing protocols for the different layers, but of course, we, as a service institute, we also apply customer-related uh, protocols. Very often, all of our customers have their own uh, testing protocols, and of course, we are able to apply them also and do the material testing regarding the membrane electrode assembly. With this, I'd like to come to an end. And uh, for further discussion, of course, I'm here for some minutes, but you're also hardly invited to visit at, at us at our booth. I think we offer maybe the best coffee in this trade fair. Uh, we brought it from Freiburg, and you're hardly invited to have a cup of coffee together with me. Thank you, and of course, again, I'm open for your questions. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Ulf Groß. Are there any questions from the audience? Okay, then uh, let me have the first one, maybe. Um, we had some different uh, presenters on stage, and especially from the industry side, it was usually mentioned that they would um, like to have more standardization. How yeah. is this from your side, from the research side? Do you see the same problem or are you working yeah. on this from a research side? Yeah. To compare results is a great problem because everyone uses different test protocols. So I showed some international, very well-known protocols which we apply, but I also mentioned that most of our customers tend to use other protocols. Um, and of course, uh, this leads to the fact that you can't compare results really. We try to help industry, and uh, in this regard, I mentioned the development of our test cell. This is commercial, it's available worldwide, and I really hope that this will be the testing platform of, uh, for industry, because also test cells um, are not standardized today. I think this test cell is, I would say, the best in the world, and I hope that all of our customers switch over to this one. Okay, thank yeah, you again, thanks. Ulf Groß. Any questions from the audience by now? If not, join them for some delicious coffee at the booth um, C58 and for the discussions. Thank you again, Ulf Groß. Thank you very much. Thank we will continue with the next presentation in about five minutes at 20 past 1 p.m. We will have on stage from Nell Hydrogen Electrolyzer. The topic will be large-scale on-site hydrogen as an enabler for decarbonization. And with us will be Raymond Schmidt, as you can already see here. Please stay with us, um, enjoy a cup of coffee. If you've missed any presentation so far, everything will be recorded and available on our YouTube channel in the upcoming days. Please go for that to our website, h2fcfair.com. See you in a minute. Thank you very much.